I'm legally insane. An alien resurrection for the PS1 recently shot up 1,000%. That is not an error. I said 1,000% seemingly overnight. So let's find out why this game shot up so fast and so freaking high. And while we're at it, let's find out why you might want to consider purchasing this game or why you might want to consider selling it well the prices are high are they going to stay it are they going to stay this high let's discuss it and i'll tell you all about it i've been telling you guys on this channel get your games cheap get them before the prices skyrocket the cheaper the better the earlier the better because sometimes things like this happen unpredictable things in this case this is a very rare situation I almost never see this type of thing, but it does happen. It happened to Phantom Dust for the Xbox recently. And I'm going to compare what happened here to Phantom Dust a little bit later on. So let's look at the chart. This is a beautiful chart, by the way. Nice, slow and steady riser. Picked up the pace around mid-2019, summer 2019. And it's been a slow and steady straight line up. You zoom out five years from now, that, that trend is going to continue. This would be a $100 game with or without the recent increase in price. This is a late release title. Came out in the year 2000, late 2000, closer to 01. First person shooter with survival horror elements. Great genre. Mixed reviews at the time. But it's been gaining popularity because it's really not a bad game. It is rather difficult, and that may be its only flaw. But guess what? There's plenty of cheat codes to make the game fun. And I mean plenty. And not just plenty of cheat codes to make the game fun either. There's cheat codes to turn this game into a $500 game. I'll get to that in a minute. I, I just want you to look at these, these recent sold listings, okay? So this was roughly a $50 game. Sold listings, you know, 70 bucks Canadian. This is all Canadian dollar, guys. I like to keep it simple. Canadian dollars. Do your own currency conversion. $60 game selling sometimes closer to 100 This doesn't always include shipping. So, you know, a really good condition game was probably going for 80 bucks on average cheaper condition 55 65 dollars 69 dollars giggity and then uh you know on rare occasion you get a closer to 100 bucks well this really took off oh look at that around december 19th because around that time was when a little known video that's now gone viral from modern vintage gamer came out discussing this game and from there it shot up as high as 600 smackers guys so you're looking at a game going from roughly 50 bucks to 500 bucks or roughly 60 bucks to a high of 600 dollars in a very short period of time so basically what happened is it was revealed from one of the developers after all this time, 23 freaking years later, the developer revealed that he coded in a super secret, secret cheat code that nobody in the world knew about except for him and his team. And they've been tight-lipped about it since. And it's finally come out. They coded, secretly coded this game without telling Sony because it would have been banned. Secretly coded this game to be a boot disc startup for burned PlayStation 1 games no modding required you don't need to mod your system and i know there's people out there that say oh it's so easy to mod your system though and it's so cheap i can mod my system for 15 dollars okay well not everyone knows the technical know-how to be able to actually do whatever whatever the hell you're talking about i don't know how to do it and i don't care to know how to do it especially if you tell me i need to solder something i don't know how to solder nothing okay i'll pay somebody 200 bucks to solder it for me Oh, but it's so easy. Uh, you can learn how to solder it on YouTube. It'll take you five minutes. You can buy the soldering tools for 20 bucks. I don't care. I'm still not going to do it. I'll pay you 200 bucks to do it. How about that? 
Okay, I don't do soldering. I'm not a technical guy. I'm not a hands-on build crap with your hands guy. I can't even hammer a nail into a piece of wood. And I'm not exaggerating. I'm not making that up. I can't even do it. I hit my thumbs on the nail. The nail hits my thumbs and my fingers. And, but the nail didn't go into the wood. That's what happens. Yeah. So that's not going to work for everyone. So there's other people like me that look at this solution and say, holy hell, this sounds great. I didn't know I could do that. So there was an article put out by Games Radar that also contributed to this going viral. It is revealed that there is a cheat code that will let you swap Alien Resurrection for seemingly any burned PS1 game. And by the way, by the way, the beauty of this cheat code is that they programmed it in. When you um, are prompted to now switch your, your disc out, it stops spinning the disc. Because that was a problem with this in the, in the very early days of PS1. People found other ways to, to make other games act as boot discs. But generally, the, the CD was still spinning, so you always risked, you took a risk of damaging your CD. But this one, st the, the CD will, will completely stop. And you can take it out safely and pop in your, your new game that you want to play. Any game. Any game. So it will do this without requiring a mod chip, a soft mod, or a memory card. All you need is a copy of the freaking game and the cheat code itself. So there's a couple of steps that you got to do. It's not just one cheat code. It's a bit of a pain to enter the cheat code. If you want to see the actual code, you, you'll have to watch his video. But I wrote down the general steps. So first you unlock the cheat menu. There's a secret cheat menu. There's cheats and then there's a cheat menu. They, like I said, this game is filled with cheats. Okay, freaking awesome game. I love cheats. I suck at games, so I really like cheat codes. So first you unlock the menu. I'll, I'll give you an example of the cheat code that you would enter. Circle, D-pad left, D-pad right, circle, D-up, R2. Okay, you get the cheat menu. Then you can unlock cheats. But then after that, you have to unlock the stage select cheat code. Okay, then you go back to the main menu to enable the super special code. That's what the creator of this code calls it. The one that he cheated Sony out of. By, uh, according to Sony policy, you had to declare all of your cheat codes to Sony before releasing a game. And they did not declare this cheat code. <laughs> those sons of bitches <laughs> and and he figures it's too late it's you know because it's been 23 years sony's not going to bother suing them now so th that's why this is coming out now he figures ah, they're not going to come after me what are they going to do they're going to sue me well you better hope they don't because <laughs> hell they might actually i doubt they will that would be really bad press okay so then you enter the super special cheat code okay then you'll hear a noise indicating that it worked. And then, like it's not even over yet, then you select level 6, section 1. Then you enter another uh, code on the button. And the code is you hold L1, press X, do not release L1. Then the disc will stop spinning and you can load the new disc. So during this whole process, you already have your system open and you will have a piece of cardboard holding the tray eject sensor down. Okay. Common trick used back in the day. So those familiar with it will, will know exactly what I'm talking about. Go check out Modern Vintage Gamers video. And he does go through the whole, pro whole process, and he even inserts a burned copy of 1999's Silent Hill. So you may be asking, why did Argonaut Games turn Alien Resurrection into a boot disc for backups? Well, according to Martin Piper, the son of a bitch that did this, in a, go a, a good son of a bitch, a developer who worked on the game and revealed its long-held secret to modern vintage gamer, the intent was experimental. Piper wanted to find out if discs could be changed without having to reset the PS1. And he didn't tell any of the other developers, nor Sony itself, about his little technical test. Well, the guy is a bloody genius. 
To be clear, when developers submit a finished game for publication, it's supposed to reveal all of its cheat codes, but this particular one was never disclosed for the simple reason that Sony would have undoubtedly kicked it back to the development for removal. And he's obviously not worried about that anymore. So, realistically, this game is going to come down in price, and it already is starting to trend down. I just checked eBay. I found a really good condition copy for $300 Canadian, and there's a a lot of games on the market between the $350 to $400 mark as we speak. Because the thing about this game is it's not rare. They sold 250,000 copies. It's not particularly rare. It's not super crazy common. And it was going to go up in value anyway as a late later release. Kind of a hidden gem that nobody ever talks about. And the more people that talk about it, it only takes one big name YouTuber to talk about a hidden gem and you end up in this scenario. That's what happened with Phantom Dust. Hey okay, guys, I bring up Phantom Dust all the time. Here we go with Phantom Dust. You see the same thing happened. It went from 15 freaking dollars to over 100. It was actually selling for like 200, 300 at its peak. You don't even see that on the price charting chart. Okay. Price charting chart does more of an average. It doesn't actually show you the, the, the peak necessarily, but there were sold listings going for over a hundred Canadian dollars. And it's currently finding its floor as we speak. Looks to be about the $50, $60 level. Look at all these sold listings. Don't look at the chart. The chart is a rough example. Okay, the chart doesn't always include or, or there's, these prices don't even always include shipping. So CIB, you're looking at $60 recent sold listing, $75. So the floor is likely currently around $50 to $60, and I would estimate will probably stay around that level for a while. A big name YouTuber, like million, 2 million, 4 million subscribers mentioned this game. He did a deep dive retrospective style video about this game being a complete hidden gem and that it was actually made by microsoft and it never it almost never saw the light of day it by some miracle long story short it was picked up and published by a another company the name eludes me and it was sold as a discount title game it was a discount bin game but it wasn't a discount bargain game. It was a triple A title. So I think the same thing is going to happen with Alien Resurrection. It will find a bottom. Might be a good time for you to sell. I mean, if you can get, let's just say you could get 300 for it right now. Heck, okay, you might be laughing if you can rebuy it back at 100 in the future, maybe 150. But just know that there's always a catch because they don't always come back down. Here's an example. Armored Core Verdict Day. This, the Armored Core game shot to the freaking moon. And there's people out there right now saying, Oh, the price is going to come down. It's going to come down. It's going to crash back down to $27. Well, it <laughs> doesn't look like it, buddy. This is a freaking hidden gem, maximum level hidden gem maximum freaking level and with that new armored core game that they released all it did was bring eyes to a game that would have otherwise gone to 100, 150 200 dollars in the long term anyway yeah it might come down at some point and find a bottom but it hasn't started yet you're running the risk in other words let's say it shot up from 40 dollars to 75 80 dollars even 100 dollars and you said oh i'm going to sell now i'm going to try to and try to rebuy it back later because I think it's going to come down because it only went up for X, Y, Z reason. Well, you run the risk of that not happening. So all I'm saying is if you go, in, go out and sell your Alien Resurrection now, you might be laughing all the way to the bank if the price does come down back to a more realistic $100, $125, $150 level, which would be, you know, a fair price. Wouldn't be too bad. You might be laughing, but I'm just saying you run the risk of perhaps that not happening. Perhaps the game bottoms out at 250 bucks. That could happen. I mean, no one really knows. 
But this game is common. Like, Armored Core Verdict Day sold like 90,000 copies, maybe even less. Alien Resurrection has 250,000 copies floating out there. So you would think, realistically, it's going to come down. I'm not selling mine, though, because I don't sell. Okay, I want the game, and I'm not willing to take the risk of selling, you know, let's say I find a local buyer, 250 bucks, and I'm hoping to rebuy it back at 150 125 plus taxes. Well, one, I might be waiting a while, for starters. And it might never happen. But it's an interesting conversation to have, and a very interesting scenario here. Great game, by the way. It will be featured in one of my future pickup videos. Alien Resurrection. Oh yeah, and the guy that I bought this off of? <laughs> he's pissed that, that, I, that he sold it to me now. Uh, I bought it a while ago. It just hasn't made it into a video yet. And yeah, he regrets selling it now. Well, that's what happens, buddy. I keep my games as long-term investments. I know which games are going up. I know which ones are going up. Not hard to figure it out. It is hard to predict the exact price that it's going to, but it's not hard to predict what's going up. When you've been in the, the business as long as I have, and you look at retro game prices on a daily basis, you guys think I'm joking about that. I'm not joking about that. Like, people don't understand. When I say I'm legally insane, I'm not joking. I'm not exaggerating. Okay, I went to prison for six years. Anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. I'm trying to get to over 9,000 subscribers. And also consider sharing this video. If you know a friend that has this game, send them this video. Because you might want to sell it. I mean, there are people out there that aren't really collectors, but they've got this game. Well, now's the time to freaking sell it, if, if that's the case, and you don't want it. Right? There are people that just have collections sitting around, and they don't really know what it's worth, and they're too lazy to sell it. Well, now might be a good time. But the market's pretty flooded. Like, as soon as you get above that $300 level, it's flooded. There are people trying to sell it. The, you know, the earlier you sold it, the better. You could have got 600 for it if you knew about this quicker. You know, that smart son of a bitch that sold it for 600 he's laughing. And he's waiting for it to go to 250 200 and he's probably going to buy back. Even at 250 even if he buys at 250 it goes to 100 So what? He still made money. 